Bloodsport is a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie directed by a guy who wears an eye patch and smokes cigarettes. I'm not kidding. That's really him. Look him up. This movie is based on the life of Frank Dukes, a world-renowned martial science grandmaster and founder of the first American system of ninjutsu, Dukes Ryu Ninjutsu also known as Duke's Fast, trademark. I see you working with the young kids. Uh, uh, do you have a favorite kind of spot for the younger ones? Frank Duke's claims range from extraordinary to just absurd. He claims to have been uh, trained in ninjutsu at the age of 13. He says that he was trained by uh, Sanzo Tanaka. His mentor apparently was a ninjutsu spy belonging to the Black Dragon Society. This all sounds unbelievable, but it's true. Frank claims to have been a CIA operative, an intelligence man for the NSA. He claims to have been in the Special Forces for the Marine Corps, top secret missions. One of them, he got stranded in Laos with a small team of men. A lot of them died. His stomach was cut open with a bayonet and he had shrapnel lodged into his back, but still, he and his uh, few good men managed to march from Laos back to base in Thailand. He claims because of this, he received the Medal of Honor. He claims that the president himself was the one who awarded Frank Dukes with the medal. What I find interesting is, is, is that you know, I was investigated for you know, making representations, of, false representations of the military. The only problem is any representation I made was true. You know, they don't tell you that part. By the way, there is no record of Frank Dukes being awarded the Medal of Honor. In fact, the LA Times discovered that Dukes was investigated by the FBI for wearing fraudulent military decorations and recommended to the US attorney in Los Angeles that Dukes be prosecuted. Here's a photo of Frank holding a trophy that he says he won in an underground death match called the Kumite. Here's a quote from a North Hollywood trophy shop saying that they made the trophy. The shop even produced a receipt proving the purchase, but Frank says it was all fabricated, most likely by his arch rival, Stephen Hayes, a well-known ninja trainer from Ohio. <laughs> uh, Frank claims that uh, Stephen is out to undermine him. Stephen Hayes says he's not. <laughs> Frank says that the International Fighting Arts Association sponsored the Kumite tournament. But when journalists tried to contact the IFAA, they found that the organization shared the same address as Frank Duke's house. Frank says that along with his trophy, he won a ceremonial sword, but had to sell the sword in a failed attempt to buy freedom for Filipino orphans who were being forced into slavery by pirates. I'm serious. Pirates. Here's a quote from Dukes himself. I sold my sword. I have no regrets from it. It went to a good cause. It went to buy the kids out of slavery. What they do is, these local chiefs, they take these kids who are orphans and they put them on these ships and go out to the South China Sea. The ships were crowded and uncomfortable. I'm talking about what we'd call a normal bunk. They had four or five kids squeezed into that thing. They lived out in the open elements. They die and the Philippine government just turns a blind eye. So Frank says that he and his friends took up arms and fought boat pirates. <laughs> and we got these kids free. <laughs> Before the Ultimate Fighting Championship came around, there was a lot of fake martial arts out there. A lot. I know people that were teaching fake martial arts that got into the military, that got into the police. I, I knew a d the guy who was deep in the police force and he had fake martial arts. Like, his martial arts were fucking completely useless. Blood sports screenwriter Sheldon Lettish had this to say about Sentai Dukes. Years afterwards, when numerous people began questioning his stories, he stopped claiming that he'd won the medal, and then began claiming that he'd never told anyone he won it. He even tried to convince me that he'd never told me he'd won the medal, or that he'd even shown it to me. But by then, his entire house of cards had collapsed. Nearly everyone knew he was just a delusional daydreamer and big bullshitter. And a big bullshitter he is. Frank Dukes claims from 1975 to 1980 that he won 329 matches. 329. Yes, 329. Uh, he claims that he retired undefeated as the world heavyweight full contact Kumite champion. According to Mr. Dukes, he still holds four world records. Most consecutive knockouts in a single tournament, 56. 56. 329 matches, 56, a single tournament. And uh, the reason I'm repeating these things is because they're so Fucking stupid! They're fucking stupid! Lightning bolt! Ah. Lightning bolt! Ah.
Earlier I alluded to Senzo Tanaka. You remember uh, the ninjutsu spy, right? Shidoshi Tanaka. Like many aspects of his story, Senzo Tanaka is most likely a figment of uh, Dukes' wild imagination. So the story goes, Tanaka takes him in as a young man and teaches him the martial arts style called Koka Yambushi Ryu Ninjutsu. Children need training. Martial science provides a way of training. Brings mind, body, spirit, so the training arc in uh, Frank Dukes' anime-esque life is pretty hilarious as it consists of strength conditioning exercises that are downright sadomasochistic. Ah! Jean-Claude's filmography is full of pearls like this, BDSM training montages, guys punching each other in the nuts, Oiled up, shirtless men fighting each other while only wearing loincloths. It's important to note that Jean Claude's one of his earliest roles, he's only credited as gay karate man. So I started to get the impression that maybe Jean-Claude was self-aware from the get-go that he was playing sort of an Andy Kaufman-esque joke on all of us. Uh, that he was subverting the idea of the uber-masculinity of the 1980s action star persona. He's punching people in the nuts, he's doing the splits. What Jean-Claude Van Damme did for that type of character is he, he took it so far, it was like, I don't know, picture He-Man in a tutu, or Chuck Norris in a dress, or just picture an action movie star doing the splits. You know, that's Jean-Claude for you. And let's go further, let's take a deep dive on this theory that I have. Maybe my hunch was right. So, some evidence to support my claims. First, look at the training. Van Damme learns to resist pain by taking a beating. He learns to love pain. Stuff like waterboarding, rope bindings, canings, and general abuse are pretty standard fare in these early Van Damme training montages. Need to protect? Yeah. I'm okay. I especially love this scene in which his legs are being forcefully spread eagle by bindings. This, uh, so he can do the splits? A little weird. Secondly, in five different Van Damme movies, someone gets hit in the nuts. Sometimes Van Damme gives the low blow, sometimes it's another character. Thirdly, Van Damme is always always the eye candy in his films. Whether he's twerking, or fighting, or whatever the hell this is, the man he loves to show off his body. It's not a Van Damme film unless he's half naked by the final showdown. Even when it doesn't make sense to be shirtless, Van Damme finds a way. Fourth, just look at this scene from The Quest. I mean, he just goes up there, he slaps the guy's tit. I love this scene. I really love this scene, because it's, it's baffling. It's like, what the fuck is this? Whenever I watch this, I get the impression that it was all improvised. Just look at the expression on this guy's face. Like, there's no way he's acting here. He looks genuinely confused. As confused as I am. Like, dude, did you just slap me in the tit? And Van Damme just stares him down. It's like, you know, Van Damme, he uh, directed the film, so he's calling the shots here. If he wants to slap someone on the tit, he can slap people on the tits. Doesn't matter, okay? But this guy here just looks like he, he was not told that this would be going down. After doing more research, I realized that my theory, it, it just wasn't holding up. For me, it now seems doubtful that Van Damme has been poking fun at uber-masculinity by being an ironically gay action hero. Although it's a nice thought, I think the answer is actually far simpler. Jean-Claude makes himself the eye candy because he's a narcissist who loves to show off his body. I mean, even now, the guy's in his late 50s, but he still can't keep his shirt off, you know? 
Uh, secondly, to explain the nut punching and the BDSM training, keep in mind that Frank Dukes bullshitted his way into Hollywood, and because of this, he ended up doing the fight choreography and writing on some of Van Damme's earliest films. In fact, they were actually close friends and creative partners. Dukes even trained Van Damme for three weeks before the shoot of Bloodsport. The question that this raises is, how does a charlatan, a fake ninja spy from Canada, train someone? What does their training routine look like? To learn that, I looked into his fighting style, Duke's Ryu Ninjitsu. Duke's teaches his students to go for the groin. What are, what are we watching right now? Well, we're gonna watch a very common technique that you're seeing in like MMA fights, bringing her hand, bringing her hand uh, down to get the groin. And she's gonna strike the testicles and what she's gonna do is pinch the testicle and actually break it or injure it. That, of course, is gonna force him to release and want to back up psychologically because he wants to get away with pain. This explains why it's so prevalent in Van Damme's early movies. Also, in the case of the sadomasochistic training regiment, while this seems to come from the early days of the Black Dragon Fighting Society, which Frank is still affiliated with, as was his Sadoshi, Senzo Tanaka. Here you can see in this clip members of the secret club hitting themselves as a form of strength conditioning. I think it's safe to say that Jean-Claude Van Damme, he's no Andy Cop, but I think it was more of a combination of Van Damme's narcissism and uh, Frank Duke's bullshit ninjutsu. It, it was the, the combination of these two men that made these movies into such delightful oddities. Basically, what my theory kind of evolved into, and it's what I believe now, is that A, Frank Duke's a compulsive liar who thinks he's a ninja spy, a charlatan who teaches his students to go for the groin, who successfully lied his way into Hollywood and managed to do fight choreography for three movies even though his only qualification is his big mouth and Van Damme, a young actor who loves to show his butt, who loves to do the splits, who spent his early years doing ballet, a man from Europe who probably doesn't have the same sensibilities about masculinity that we do in the West. He somehow becomes an action movie star and he brings all of this weird European stuff to it and he's just like, what do you mean this is gay? This isn't gay. This is cool. I could do the splits. I can kick, you know? So it's this guy who's probably, I don't know how aware he is, but I mean, you take this guy, this young actor, who clearly believed Frank Dukes' lies, listen to him for advice, for the scripts, for the fighting, for the choreography. Van Damme, a young actor who believed a charlatan. <laughs> 